Stadium, and it as seemed like well. The so idea we're here on the Series X. That more a... games for Capcom Arcade Stadium. It came out with 30 games that you could buy in packs of 10 originally, or all of them. Oh no, I think yeah, I think they were only available in packs of 10. Uh, eventually, they released them as individual purchases as well. You know, 30 classic Capcom coin ops from their earliest days of 83, 84, I think, um, all the way through to the early 2000s. And the assumption was after that, that they would then, yeah, add more DLC to this stadium wrapper, which is a really nice wrapper with loads of features, all the kind of retro game stuff that you'd want manuals and leaderboards and unlockables and you could customize all your cabinets kind of manner from heaven to old arcade mm. fans like me um decent amount of options uh in terms of you know how, how you make the game look and all this kind of stuff um but then all went quiet and instead uh they released uh their fighting game collection which came out about three weeks before this or something like that which is again a fantastic collection of old specifically capcom arcade fighting mm. games then they released capcom arcade second stadium which is for whatever reason a completely separate download it has all the exact same features and they even updated the first client to match a couple of the new features of the second one so essentially you just have to boot the different client depending on which games you want to play. And the games are split across the history of Capcom from between the first and the second. So you'll have games in different series on the different compilations rather than having them all in a neat line. So it's all a bit weird, weird like that. And also a load of the games that are in the, in the Capcom fighting collection are also on this. So if you're not like a complete, you know, retro vintage arcade coin op nutter like I am, you probably you if you've bought one you won't need the other and vice versa it's only if you want to kind of have access to absolutely every game they've ever made more than once um there's a bunch of games on this that you've probably already got in in the street fighter anniversary collection um there's also capcom arcade cabinet which is a different thing that they released about 10 years ago on last gen but you can still play it on your xbox series right. x and that's basically a bunch of the same games as well anyway um but 30 games, I would say about half to two thirds of them are absolutely cracking. A bunch, a, a small subset of them are absolutely spot on. The emulation's really solid, especially on PlayStation. I've been playing this. It's a PS4 client, but I've been playing it on PS5. Probably makes no difference. Um, there's some input latency issues on the Switch version, apparently, which is quite common with emulated stuff. Really? Um, well, for that yeah. specific console? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of issues with with input lag on various emulated games on on the Switch, according to the expert channels that I follow. Oh, yeah. uh, partly to do with controller latency, and partly just to do with the nature of the machine and the way it outputs. And I was just say, like James, James I mean, put his hand up to talk. Then, James, you're on a podcast oh, that you've been on for God knows how long. We, we, we don't usually use cameras. Why are you putting your hand up to talk? I didn't put days? my hand up. I went. I put my finger he's up. Being very polite, and I pointed. Oh, he's. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to make a point no no because the that, episode title. that yeah. has just reminded me something else I wanted to say about Cult of the Lamb but I forget it it doesn't matter I know it's just come from nowhere yeah. but that's what happens sometimes <laughs> when you have a conversation David you remember stuff you know it does you're, you're killing too. the flow more than roller drone at the moment Blit. <sighs> <laughs> that's <laughs> it <laughs> it's an evolving conversation it's this on it's roller an evolving conversation <laughs> go on <laughs> anyway what was I saying yes uh, yeah I mean uh uh, for me, like uh, th these two as a set, the the original arcade stadium and this this one, even though they've released them in a weird way, and why do I need two clients that are exactly the same? Um, they are just absolutely essential, like in my collection, always installed, always just there for a quick game of whatever. Um, I particularly like the the fact that each of the games in the collection has a very specific kind of score attack mode. Where so obviously uh, with with a lot of these. Uh, retro compilations or emulated games they'll give you the option to muck around with the with the settings to give yourselves more lives or even rewind or save states or whatever else and that's all great and i absolutely applaud all that but it can be a temptation to kind of abuse the games in that way and then see them see them all or see them through sometimes it's it's a boon because you don't want to get good at a particular game yeah. but each of these games has a score attack mode which locks you into a particular set of settings, a number of lives, one one credit, and whatever else, and you you basically you have to 
get better at that game to register a score online. It won't even accept a score below a certain threshold and things like this. And <laughs> I, then you get, I would not be on those leaderboards. <laughs> <laughs> then you get yourself on the leaderboards. Then you can see where you are in the in the global rankings and all that kind of stuff. So if, you, if you're into that, like mm. I am, then, then yeah, it's so it sounds like it's got something for everyone, so. whether you're like the hardcore and you want to, you know, go to that hard case settings so. or you just want to like see games, see ending, maybe you played when you're in your youth and you want to turn it totally. on easy mode. It sounds like, it's, yeah, if, if you're into that kind of stuff, it looks pretty yeah. good. One controversial element is I think the invincibility mode that's totally, I mean, you can still use save states and I think rewind, but I think the invincibility mode is actually a, a microtransaction. It's like oh, two quid or something wow. to turn on invincibility on all games, something like that. Um, oh, or, or possibly that's outrageous. You, possibly, <laughs> you, yeah. Cl- that, that's classic outrageous. Capcom. Possibly you get it if you've already got the original Capcom Arcade Stadium. But yeah, the other thing about this is, so the, the games on the original, uh, I think they reduced the prices after releasing them all individually. Um, I think the games on this one, you can buy them all individually this time, which you couldn't before. But I think they're like four quid a game as opposed to two quid or whatever the original. But again, if you were buying like a, a you know, a weekly release from Hamster or, you know, the Arcade Archives label, you'd be paying five, six quid per game anyway. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't think four quid is outrageous. Um, but two quid, obviously, I, I guess the price will drop at some point. And then for people who are less invested than me, you can just pick up one or two that you like for a couple of mm. quid and grab some achievements and whatever else. Trophies. Cool. So, do you reckon these like retro collections are getting better and better these days? I mean, that buying achievements is a bit dodgy, in... but it sounds like they're, they're pretty complete. Yeah. No, the, I, I think that's very much the case. There's been a lot of emphasis on, because there's a lot of kind of really, really hardcore dedicated channels to this stuff. Um, you know, real ad, advocates of playing on original hardware where you can and whatever else, but of course not everyone has that They've capacity. They've also got to do something to... because there's a huge rise in these like sort of dedicated retro mm. consoles now. S- mm. Spoke about them a yeah. few times on the podcast recently, but... Uh, if you're offering a, a selection of um, retro games, you've got to fucking put the effort in these days. Yeah, there's there's been so much there's there's so much discussion now about input input latency as a particular bugbear. It's the kind of thing that you wouldn't necessarily notice if you'd never played the original games or if you weren't particularly sensitive to it. But it's kind of it's a bit like the the FPS discussion in that it's one of those things that once you start to notice it, you notice it more and more. So. Um, and it can, it can obviously input latency can actually kill your ability to play a game well. And, and a lot of these old games didn't take any prisoners uh, or make any apologies about being, you know, requiring incredible responses. So out, anything beyond kind of three or four frames a second, you're really going to start to notice it. Audio lag is another thing traditional issue with with emulated titles bad screen filters that don't give you the correct look of, of of the old monitors and whatever so i think there's been because the the level of enthusiasm in the market and the level of knowledge in the market has, has grown so as the uh the sort of the the care and attention that mm. that the companies tend to put yeah. into these things now apart, apart from uh, sonic origins which uh, yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> bit of a bit of a mess that well they got the right people in to do it but yeah. then they they kind of took it off their hands uh to to get it out the door which is a real which is a real shame it's had one update but um mm. i'm ho- um, yeah hopefully there'll be more. I, find, I find it interesting you mentioned about the fact that like some emulators are poor in terms of lag or latency and stuff and yet like so many of the other, the other ones like are trying to be like switch killers and yet they can do emulation perfectly and play you know the, the kind of uh, the more modern games as well yeah it can be a real minefield with this stuff and i i'm probably not like there there are some people out there there are some as i say dedicated youtubers and uh, people who absolutely like forensically tear this stuff apart and i'm not quite at that level but um but i but i do appreciate it when it's done well and you can definitely feel the difference between a game that's uh that's not responding and a game that is mm. 